If you were around at all in the 90s, you know there's a band called Oasis and they had a huge hit called Wonderwall. And some of the lyrics in this song are, all the roads we have to walk are winding and all the lights that light the way are blinding. See what that means. What that means is that when you are thinking about going through life, you've got this particular path, but Sometimes you might not be able to see. <clears throat> and in this moment, when it's too dark, it's too dark and you can't see, what you're hoping for is just to be able to get to where you're going, to continue your journey, right? I want to see this path, but it's too dark and I can't see it. So imagine we get what we ask for and there's something that lights the way. And as this thing lights the way, we think, oh my gosh, this is way too bright. And this road, why is it so windy? But remember, we were just asking for a way to see the road. So this gives us a chance to choose what to focus on. Do I focus on everything that's wrong? This is too bright and this road is too windy. Or can I focus on the fact that there's a path that I get to walk? Right? We get to choose. In other words, you've got your life and your life is pretty good. Absolutely speaking, it's probably pretty good, uh, especially if you compare it to past versions of yourself. As you compare it to past you, uh, a lot of people, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people are in a better position now than they were 10, 20, 30 years ago, depending on how old you are. You're better off now than you were before. And if you go to your ancestors, if you could read your ancestors' diaries, you'd be living the dream life. Could you imagine the life that you're living is unimaginable to your ancestors. Oh my God, that'd be, they would kill for this kind of life. Kill for these kind of luxuries. You get to walk into a box and temperature controlled water falls down on you and this water doesn't get anywhere else. It's contained to what we call a shower. You can just clean yourself without jumping into a dirty tub. Are you kidding me? You get to go to the bathroom inside? You get climate controlled, temperature controlled shelter? You're comfortable even in harsh conditions. You're living an amazing life. But even though you're living this dream life, we are, we are wired to compare ourselves to others. So we compare ourselves to, say, the Joneses. And the Joneses, they used to actually be our neighbors. So we can compare ourselves to others, our neighbors, our social circles, our friends, our colleagues at work. And when we do that, even though we're better off than we used to be, because now I'm comparing myself to others, I don't feel quite as well. And because we've got blinders on, we don't compare ourselves to people who are worse than us. We only compare ourselves to people who are better than us. And then, of course, with social media, you know, we're not even comparing ourselves to real people anymore. We're comparing ourselves to curated versions of a certain small select subset of people's lives. So this is crazy. We have great lives, but we don't act like it. We pretend we don't. And it's because we've got this inherent negativity bias where we see something bad and we say, well, this sucks. Life sucks. It's the worst. And we ignore all these good things that are in our lives. We completely ignore all of it. Right? So this negativity bias that we're inherited from our ancestors, our ancestors got ahead by avoiding threats. Right? And if you miss an opportunity, that's no big deal. So I didn't have to be so focused on opportunities. I could focus all my attention on avoiding threats because those are the people that survived to become your ancestors. Think of it this way. Author Rick Hansen says that our brain is like Velcro for negative experiences. Those will stick. Those negative experiences, they will stick. You will spot them. You will remember them easier. You'll recall them faster. And positive experiences, the brain is like te uh, Teflon for those. They bounce right off of us. We have no idea that we're even having these experiences. So this is what we're going up against. Now the trick then is to just simply notice. Raise your awareness. And you can do this through cultivating a sense of gratitude. You can introduce gratitude practice into your life. And that's just, it's not, you're not ignoring the bad. You're just taking in the good. It helps alleviate what you might call hedonic adaptation fog. So you're sitting here 
grasping at all the things that you want, unaware that you're already sitting on things that you already have. So gratitude helps you pay more attention to what you have, pay more attention to all the ways that life is actually going well for you. It, it allows you to, to stop taking life for granted while you continue to strive for the things you want. You get one life. Live intentionally. Greetings, Derek again. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more, please head to meaning.blog and there you can learn about all things related to money and mindset and purpose and meaning. And you'll be able to find out how we might be able to work together. You'll find more articles. You'll find links to videos. You'll find online courses. All kinds of things to get you going on your journey towards living more intentionally.